okay, there is no way that's that man's real hair. It, that is action figure <laughs> hair, right? <laughs> On his head? I'm getting the good plugs because I'm going to be in a Hollywood movie, yeah. honey. <laughs> I'm getting these done at the mall next to Aunt Annie's pretzels. No spared expense. <laughs> Give me a cheese jalapeno. Yes. <laughs> Not the plugs, not the plugs. Oh, I got cheese jalapeno plugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why they offer those. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if we didn't, you'd notice. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Cristiano Brothers, I oh, missed him so much. So delightful. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, man, this was, <laughs> so it was stupid. worth the wait. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Cristiano Brothers! <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Heath. What will we be breaking Christiana down? Brothers. <laughs> they made a movie. We watched Unidentified. It's the story of walking that fine line of journalistic integrity by presenting both weather balloons and literal demons and letting the reader decide <laughs> about UFOs. And Eli, how wonderfully bad was this movie? Well... If you thought aliens traveling at inconceivable speeds impossibly far across the universe to probe your cousin's butt was stupid, but not nearly dangerous and well-funded enough, <laughs> you will love this movie. It is literally Bigfoot isn't real, he's a demon, the movie. <laughs> oh, it's delightful. And of course, as we've already mentioned, this one comes to us from one of our all-time favorite writer-directors. If you're new to this show or if you just haven't memorized quite as much Christian cinema lore as we have. I should let everybody know. Seriously, <laughs> you're a court is... stenographer somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this is from the incredibly litigious Rich Cristiano. This is the man who gave us Second Glance, a movie so good that I had to write a goddamn love poem for it. Time Changer. Remember, that, that was the movie about a man who from like the 1800s who traveled to the modern day and noticed nothing at all except for like, how much more risque the advertisements of the day are. Yeah. And of course, his masterwork, Matter of Doubt, wherein a man wins a debate <laughs> by crying and storming off of a stage. <laughs> and this, I honestly, this might have been his best worst movie. I think it was. <laughs> we have now tracked Rich Cristiano's arguing ability across enough films that we can see terrifyingly he has gotten better at arguing <laughs> between this film and Matter of Doubt. Oh, okay. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst juice. You okay. son of a... How dare you? Okay. <laughs> so the adults who work at this journalism magazine... Multiple times in this movie, they well, one of them goes out to the deli to get food and drinks for the rest of them. And every single time, the first person orders like, I love cookies and juice. <laughs> somebody else, somebody else is like, Oh, I mean, you know, you're a you're a grown up. Do you mean like the uh, the Adwala thing or like the naked juice? And he's like, Apple. And he's like, All right, <laughs> Apple juice. It is so. It's like everyone just started taking out candy necklaces and eating them and the movie never acknowledges it. <laughs> they're just all having a fucking fun dip while they're trying to break the story. It's such a terrifying insight into Rich Cristiano's right. life. Right, that coffee or a soda would have been way too controversial for his audience. <laughs> Whew. And I was going to, of course, I stole the other easy one. I went with best worst stumbles. <laughs> so they're so ridiculous. Three times sure. in the course of this film, <laughs> aliens will come for people. And in every instance, they'll start off by running away from the flying saucer and then like, stumbling as though there must be a better way to get away from aliens. You know, <laughs> it is hilarious. And mm. everyone is more ridiculous than the last one. Yeah. It's like hockey players tripping over the blue line. <laughs> yes. It's yep. amazing. 
<laughs> a lady towards the end, the final stumbler will <laughs> will fail to stumble, catch herself, and be like, "Oh, right, stumble, uh, yes. stumble, stumble." <laughs> Now, I was almost going to go with Best Worst Alien Bait, but I will admit, I wrote that before I watched the end of this movie. So I'm going to go with a <laughs> controversial take and say Best Worst Last Words. Okay. <laughs> now, as I've said, we watched Rich Cristiano's Matter of Doubt, where the debate ends with someone crying and storming off stage. <laughs> But this movie essentially ends with two for flinching. Jesus is your Lord and Savior now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, the, the ending of this just, I'm not going to spoil it for you, listener. I'm just going to tell you the ending of this movie is goddamn glorious. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we got a lot of substrates of crazy to scrape our way through to make it to the end of this flick. So we're going to take a second, grab our shovels, but we'll be back in a minute with all the flagrant insanity of unidentified. So I'm thinking that, like, you know, I'm at the grocery store and then you walk over. No, I want to do it. I want to do it now. Heath, we have to do ad. No, I, just, I want to just start talking about it now. <sighs> Fine. But only because it's the first one. We're doing a okay. sketch next time. OK, great. Hello, podcast listener. I'm Heath. How are you? Heath, it's a podcast. It's a podcast. Yeah, I, maybe you don't know. Maybe maybe they replied. OK, it doesn't matter. How are you? Just it's out there in the ether so what does matter is this week's sponsor is moink and they sent us bacon and that bacon is so good just he's, he's right it is very good my wife assures me that it is in fact good yes it is amazing moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb pastured pork and chicken and wild-caught alaskan salmon direct to your door helping family farms become financially independent outside of big agriculture that sounds pretty awesome heath but but tell me, Heath, is there a best part? There is definitely a best part. That's such a good question. Sign up at moinkbox.com slash awful to get a year of bacon for free and then pick what meats you want delivered with your first box. Change what you get each month and cancel any time. Wow, that sounds really good. But can you tell us a little about the company? Moink was founded by an eighth generation farmer who was featured on Shark Tank. Fun fact, host Kevin O'Leary said it's the best bacon he's ever tasted. And I actually agree. It is the best. And Jamie Simonoff, creator of the Ring Video Doorbell, he invested in Moink. Oh, well, if the Ring Doorbell guy invested in it, it must be delicious bacon. It is. They guarantee you will say exact words, oink, oink, I'm just so happy I got moinked. Okay, that can't possibly be in the copy. It is literally in the copy. Wow, their bacon is so good that they try to sell it by saying, oink, oink, I'm just so happy I got moinked. Moinked. And people buy it. Yep, yep, it is that good. Like, wow. just so good that that is literally in the copy. Mm. So join the moink movement today. Go to moinkbox.com slash awful right now and listeners to the show get free bacon for a year. That's one year of the best bacon you'll ever taste, but only for a limited time. It's spelled M-O-I-N-K box dot com slash awful. That's moinkbox dot com slash awful. Moink. Meat so good you'll give some as a gift to your drug dealer. I feel like the Heath really? endorsement was probably fine. I did, though, because I, I couldn't eat the steak because of the dentures. He loved it. He did? All right, Dave. You ready to write our next big hit movie? I sure am, Rich. All right, let's spin the wheel of culture. And it's aliens. Aliens. Hmm. And we, we don't believe in aliens, do we? No. No, we don't. But we do believe in demons, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe aliens are demons. That is what we believe. Yep. All right, so maybe we could make a movie about that, like where the, you know, like some news reporters or something discover that. Oh, yeah, 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 like the X-Files. You, you've seen the X-Files? Um, no, no. Have you seen it? No, oh, no. Oh. Okay, so just like the X-Files. Exactly. Good job, brother. Good job to you. Shall we celebrate with a refreshing high C? <laughs> high C, you said it. Mm. Mm. We're literally millionaires. Yep, sure are. Can I try the grape? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. 
And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on those three little words that always make Andrew's heart skip a beat. Cristiano Film Group. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say we open up here with, I have it down in my notes as, final boss in the shooter from a 90s music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The music is telling us that uh, Michael Marshall is calling from inside of the house. For <laughs> yeah, and we we get like, you know, I don't know, all the 77 bars of this music because we're watching names just rise out of smoke for like, I don't know, four fucking minutes to open this thing, right? And none you've ever heard of, right? It's not like we're introducing Al Pacino. It's like Walter T. Smitherson. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. But eventually, at long last, we open on October 30th, 1938, where a bunch of old-timey New Englanders are freaking the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fun fact, that actually didn't happen. So they're supposed to be freaking out at the War of the Worlds here, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Orson Welles' War of the Worlds broadcast. Yeah, so fun fact, that didn't actually happen with any significance. Nope. Newspapers were just mad that radios were stealing their ads, so they acted like it was a big deal. It, it's kind of like how today's news can't stop reporting that the internet rots your brain. Yeah, right. well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's an urban legend about an urban legend, right? Wait, so that wasn't like a really problematic, impactful hoax? Not really, no. <laughs> there, there were a few people who had, but, but there wasn't even like a significant rise in phone calls to the radio stations or anything like that yet. And if you ever listen to the broadcast, it's obvious because they're like, the aliens are attacking. We take a break from this year's radio program yeah, to tell right. you about meth. Meth. <laughs> Delicious and nutritious. I have some in my breakfast cereal. All right. Back to the aliens and what they would be like. This is a radio program. Four out of five dentists recommend <laughs> meth. Yeah. Right. Right. So, I mean, maybe they need a break. You don't know. All right, so, but then we, we cut to some air traffic control. Well, okay, we have three different groups that are all going to, like, spot this alien in the present day, starting with a, a couple of air traffic controllers talking sports. Yeah, we get air traffic controllers talking sports, guy in a truck having, like, I don't want to visit your parents conversation, and kids <laughs> camping out telling <laughs> scary stories. But because this was written by the Cristiano brothers, all three of those versions are done insane. Right. They make no sense. So, okay. The kids telling the ghost stories yes. was the best part of this. One kid is like doing that thing and he's like, did the butler do it? Did the maid do it? Did Colonel Mustard do it? Yes, he did. Got him. Got him. That's not... How that works. I wanted one other kid in that group to be like, 45 minutes, Cheryl. This is why we hate you. <laughs> this is why you don't get us. You list it's rule of three is 45. You yes. see <laughs> the factor of 15 there. And the air traffic controllers are talking sports, but they obviously don't know any of the sports. So it's just like, well, if you're upset with the coach, you should write him a letter. Maybe I will write him a letter. Do you begin that to whom it may concern, or can you start familiar? I would start to whom it may concern. Okay, good. <laughs> Dear sirs or ma'am? <laughs> it's going to be sirs, right? Yeah. yeah. So, And then also, of course, the guy in the truck is having the most generic in-law. It's not that I don't like your father. It's that he and I don't agree on p several issues that are of importance to, oh, my God, please, someone say cut. <laughs> <laughs> sure hope I don't get abducted by aliens right now. Ah, right. This very... <laughs> moment yeah but then like everybody looks into the sky you know yeah look at that very well done alien spaceship we sure didn't blow our whole budget on fancy credits no we didn't <laughs> <laughs> trust us it looks awesome yeah and then of course this is where we get the first of my best worsts because the guy who's in the truck his truck stops working then he sees the aliens and he goes <laughs> to run away and he falls like from falling, I don't know if that Moving makes sense, time. but he like falls within his fall. <laughs> My toddler has a new thing now when he walks over a place that he's not supposed to be. When we walk him back, he pretends to fall down so he can be in the place he's not supposed to be. That's how this guy falls down. I feel like this actor was like, I have nine good falls. I would like you to use all oh, of them. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. He falls <laughs> twice. He's it's, it's it's pretty good. All right. And then we cut to the magazine office where the majority of this movie is going to take place. We meet 
Lauren, who is pitching story ideas to um, Brad and Vince. Yeah. Lauren looks like Jennifer Aniston's getting kissed by David Schwimmer stunt double. <laughs> I feel like Jennifer Aniston liked that better when it was the double. <laughs> and Brad is going to be our atheist and skeptic. Mm -hmm. And we could tell that because he looks like a porn star from 1991 and literally no <laughs> other possible year. <laughs> I thought he was attractive. I, I guess I'm attracted to 91 porn stars. That would actually make a lot of sense. What I've learned yeah, today. I, I, no doubt about that. And Vince, who's sort of his sidekick, I just have down as baby Rob Schneider throughout okay. the entire movie. Mm. All right. All right. That's accurate. No, it's, he's like the halfway between Rob Schneider and Norm MacDonald. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So everything you need to know about how good Rich Cristiano is at writing dialogue, you find out in this opening fucking sequence where Lauren is trying to like pitch different story ideas. So all he's got to do is come up with three random ideas for <laughs> news stories that will be rejected. <laughs> and every one of them is fucking nuts. Yep. It's nuts. He could not think of bank robbery, storm, right. opening of a Piggly Wiggly. Instead, he's like, <laughs> okay, three... Ordinary stories. Lady football player. Fountains are stupid. I could turn myself inside out with a wet towel. Shit. Sorry. What was the second one? Fountains are stupid. Yeah. So he was He was like, well, everybody loves stories about wasteful government spending. How about this one about a fucking fountain in downtown Atlanta? And I'm just like, Rich, are you anti-fountain? <laughs> really really rich cristiano is anti the statues in downtown atlanta yeah, right. <laughs> in whatever year this was i bullshit i like it because you ever see like matt gates or cawthorn or one of those fucking fakers try to guess what the stupid idiots who vote for them want so they're like i'll tell you what tucker carlson i hate how wet the donuts are and then oh. you fucking <laughs> grandpa is like where the wet donuts that's how rich cristiano writes dialogue okay. i thought you were gonna name a race for sure <laughs> uh can we also point out that the magazine is called <laughs> both sides <laughs> that is Literally, the t they're literally both sizing it in the fucking title. Right, right. Oh. Also, every wall in this <laughs> in this magazine office has a poster about themselves. Yeah, like a cover poster. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> One of them says, gene therapy, the hope and the fear. Yes. <laughs> One of them says, flat tax. Is it time? That one was written by Ben Carson. <laughs> that was written by Ben Carson. And another one said Social Security. And I think the subtitle was, Do we want that? <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. This is the dumbest. This is, this is Atlas Shrugged the magazine. Right. Learn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But while they're trying to find a, a good story, Vince, baby Rob Schneider, comes across a story about a man who says he was abducted by aliens on the internet. So, holy shit, hold the presses, am I right? Yeah, literally, their <laughs> boss is like, well, look, you're going to Houston, which is two hours away from the alien thing. Just why don't you go up a day early and see if aliens are real? <laughs> <laughs> or not, both sides. Yeah, yeah. right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> To Brad's credit, who will be my favorite throughout this movie in spite of looking like he's part of a boy band slash creatine addiction recovery unit, <laughs> will be like, oh, okay, uh, I checked. Aliens aren't real. Can I have a day of vacation now? Right. He's my fucking hero. He needs to just punch people in the face for the rest of the movie, and he never does. Amen. <laughs> I was mad. Oh, I loved it. I loved how over the top they had to go with this character, too. So, but he, this is also where we meet our main character, Keith, right? Because the, the boss, Roy, is like, all right, Brad, you have to go and check out this UFO story when you go down to Houston with Keith. Now, Keith will be our not quite Christian enough at the beginning, but Christian enough by the end character. Yeah, and... I'm pretty sure arc. he's what Rich Cristiano thinks a Latino looks like. He's, <laughs> he's not, but I'm pretty sure Rich Cristiano didn't know that. And he was like, look at that diverse casting. Yeah, right, right. I got an Australian, I got a Mexican, and I got a woman. I'm nailing this. <laughs> Latino, that means round, right? Round face? <laughs> 
and fucking stock airplane landing footage be damned. We are now in Texas, okay? And <laughs> Keith and Brad are stopping at a at a cafe in the town where the abductee guy lives. Yeah. They just walk in. <laughs> They're like, "Hello, random diner full of people. We're looking for Randy Mitchell." <laughs> and it works. It does right? work. It's a weird fucking plan, but everybody's like, oh, Randy, fuck, Bill Brasky? Of course yeah, we know right. who that is. Norma, yeah. Well, again, you can see the working of Rich Cristiano's mind, right? Because there was a moment where he was sitting at his little typewriter and he was like, how do reporters find someone? Diner. Diner and ask. And they yell out loud the person's <laughs> name like they're taking attendance. Like they're trying oh. to like get a dog to show back up. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Randy. Randy Mitchell. Yeah. And this is where we meet the two elderly gentlemen that you assholes made me be the first one to write old Tom and Cecil in the notes about. Excellent. Right. <laughs> yeah. I have them as Statler and Waldorf. And then I spent yeah. like six pages of notes trying to analyze whether or not Statler and Waldorf are a gay couple. They are. <laughs> they are. That's Muppet canon now. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think it was like a Burton and Ernie vibe. Yeah. 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 Very much so. I never got a couple vibe. I feel like Burton and Ernie are a bad gay relationship. Statler and Waldorf are, the, are couple goals. <laughs> Statler and Waldorf are goals for you in a relationship. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to circle back mm -hmm. to that real quick. Yeah. Old and roasting people, rich. So, okay, but we... Okay, we, you know what? Yeah. Withdrawn. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason, of course, that you have to look at these two as a couple is because of this amazing moment of weird Christian actor space work. Because they're laughing and one guy goes to put his hand on the other guy's shoulder like, ha ha. And he realizes that that doesn't work because he's too far away. So he just lays his hand on his boob for a second. <laughs> hey, did you lightly uh, <laughs> caress my boob because you couldn't reach just, or just because you wanted holds to? Holds it there because otherwise it would be obvious that this was weird. <laughs> you can move your hand back out now. I feel like it's been enough time. Don't do walk like an Egyptian hands, man. Don't, like Don't do the shh along my lips either. Oh, you're doing it. Okay. Okay, damn it. But yeah, but they tell him where they can find Randy the abductee. So they go to the body shop where he works in the greasy faced department. He works in the smudge department. <laughs> yeah. But not so okay. <laughs> you picture somebody who's a mechanic and it's like, okay, yeah, they got some right, dark right. smudges from like Whatever, oil and dust and whatever, the dark stuff that's on the underside of a car. But this guy has one yes. smudge as if he pushed his face into a stamp. Yeah, it's like a perfect <laughs> yes. shape. Yeah. It's so silly. And we should point out, Randy looks like Lou Diamond Phillips's being Lou Diamond Phillips stunt double. It's, it's very, <laughs> very close. Yeah, so they, they want to talk to him, and, and of course, he doesn't want to talk to them because if there's one thing UFO abductees have in common, it's a hesitancy to talk to everyone they can fucking know <laughs> still about it. Wait, wait, wait. So he talked to the local news, and then the national news got there, and he was like, uh, this is kind of private. I really yeah. just meant that for the <laughs> local papers. Sorry, really quick. Are you both sides or one or what? How many sides are you doing? <laughs> yeah, but like, didn't they just inadvertently encapsulate the exact problem with that dumbass, simplistic idea of a both sides magazine? Right? Like, they sure did. Maybe aliens abducted Billy Bob. Maybe reality is still real. Let's devote equal numbers of column inches to both possibilities. <laughs> yeah. At one point during this conversation, because he doesn't want to tell them, he goes, leave me alone or I'll call the police. And I'm just picturing him. Hello, police. These guys asked me to tell the story I told everybody. <laughs> hey, Randy, you, you got to stop calling us, man. <laughs> <laughs> what did we say last time? It was earlier today. Don't report fake murders. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So Brad's ready to give up, damn it. But Keith isn't ready to give up, damn it. So they head back to the uh, <laughs> diner to talk to elderly Tom and Cecil instead because... Because Rich Cristiano didn't realize he could have just added this information to the first scene with these yep. guys. Could have. Like, wait, 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 I got something. I got something. I have to skip, though, because we already said the other stuff. Yep, it goes here. But ultimately, elderly Tom remembers that there were also camping kids in the intro and uh, air traffic controllers. So, yeah, we get one of several Columbo moments where it's like, hold on, one last thing. What about those kids? <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. We're journalists. I, you're doing the Columbo thing. What? What about those kids? <laughs> yeah. Fine. So, yeah. So, they, they talk to the air traffic controllers. They don't want to talk to them. So, they, they round out the intro trifecta 
by stalking one of the kids. Hello, child. We are full grown adults who just stepped out of a car in front of you. We would like to talk to you in our back seat now, please. Right? What okay. the fuck? The first line before that even happens, the first line in the scene is Brad saying to Keith, you do realize these kids are going to think we're stalking them. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, hey, uh, pro tip, stop what you're doing. If that <laughs> sentence pops up in your life, you got to stop. Well, also, like, let's let's be super clear. What they're doing is stalking children. Right. Keith says, <laughs> right. come on. I talked to somebody at the school. They told me all the kids that were involved. They gave me their addresses and said that this kid had the best view. And I'm like, who the fuck did you talk to? <laughs> he, he told me the best bush to pop out of. We're right next to it. So why don't you just hop in there with me? We're going to jump it's out. A, it's a Catholic school. <laughs> okay. He really likes Charleston Chew. So that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they pop out on the kid that was telling the ghost story and they're like, hello, young man. We understand you were the one with speaking lines in that opening scene. So we thought we'd talk to you. But he doesn't, he doesn't want to talk to him either. And Brad's like, Okay, so everyone we've talked to has said they don't want to talk about this. There's no story here. But Keith is like, damn it, Brad, there's obviously a movie here. I checked that little bar at the bottom of the screen and everything. <laughs> hey, just li- listen to that. Do you hear that? You hear that music? <laughs> Why would there's that be There's something weird about this. If there wasn't something mysterious <laughs> going on. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> singing it now. Man. That's you. <laughs> don't, don't do banana. <laughs> So Keith and Brad go back to the magazine headquarters and they're like, so how was the big alien story? And Brad's like, it was stupid. And Keith's like, it wasn't stupid. <laughs> and there there you go. It's both sides magazine. You've, you've got to imagine that's how it usually goes. But it starts with Brad, the atheist guy. He's going to we're going to find out he's he's the voice of reason. He's like, yeah, that was a giant waste of time. UFO stuff is dumb. I told you that. And I, I was rooting so hard for it just to be like, oh, end of movie. <laughs> credits start to scroll up we're journalists we checked it's a no it's no no nothing there yeah. but instead so keith starts telling the tale like he's recounting everything they learned in the style of a flamboyant movie it's, lawyer making his closing argument he's doing like the jfk speech he's yeah, doing like right, back yes. and to the left yeah and mm-hmm. he's doing it as a walk and talk but Everybody in the office with him is way too fucking close right. to do a walk talk. <laughs> right. So he takes like a step and a half and then he's like, I'm touching your face. <laughs> I have to turn back around. Can you guys spread it so I can walk it talk? I want to do a loop or something. <laughs> but yeah, but Brad isn't buying any of this bullshit. Roy, the boss, he's like, but wait a minute. Thousands of people uh, would all have to be stupid or liars for alien abductions to be made. <laughs> Thousands of Americans that are stupid liars. Come on. Come on, man. Yeah. At least you don't have to worry about anyone making that argument after the year 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. Uh, uh, Lauren pipes in here. She goes, yeah. most of the people who see aliens are credible witnesses like doctors, engineers, and people who work in the military. And I wrote in my notes, okay, one, one of these things doesn't belong. Yeah, and two, who, which of these things no. is not like the other. Yeah, right. Right, exactly. Right. And all of them don't belong. Whatever. There's dumb doctors and engineers, too. Yep. Ben Carson was a doctor. Y'all. That's true. <laughs> so. That's true. Elon Musk is an engineer. Fuck you. Yeah, but so... Of course, the both sides that are smells a bit of a scoop here. So he assigns Keith to the aliens are legit story and Brad to the aliens aren't legit story. Yeah, Brad, I, I hear you. But if it's not real, you just prove a negative, right? Just go out there and prove, <laughs> Get the out negative. There and prove yourself a negative. <laughs> yeah, well, Brad's being a giant asshole here and Keith is being very open minded. So that's what they're setting up. Yep. This is Brad, <laughs> the dogmatic atheist. Yep. Versus Keith, the Christian free thinker, just asking questions. <laughs> That's the movie. And then, and then they all order toddler beverage <laughs> juice. But again, it's so weird because it is the coffee scene, right? With the silliest objects to be ordered. It's just like, oh no, I'm not the one getting it this time. No, I went last time. All right, fine. What do you want? I want a fruit punch and a crunchy num num. Fruit punch and a crunchy <laughs> num num. Sorry. We're it's full grown adults. Two fruit apple punch? juices and a fruit punch. Literally, that's the order for grown ups. <laughs> I really wanted their boss to come over and be like, guys, it's a little close to nap time for fruit punch, don't you think? 
<laughs> Why don't you have a warm milk? How about a chocolate, warm milk? Chocolate milk. Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> I want chocolate too. He said. Yes. <laughs> Me too. Oh God! I think and Drake's coffee cake that will come back rule of three style. The juice will. I love it so goddamn much. Okay, so but meanwhile, a couple of drunken rednecks are out for a little night fishing. <laughs> yes, they have to do a little bit of dialogue at the yes. beginning yeah. that was yes. not quite scripted. So they're like, "Louisiana's where we are." <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, do you the have a truck, truck talk? Yes. You have a truck, truck talk. It's you, uh, fucking you incredible. Said you, have, you did say you have a truck? I'm happy. <laughs> how, your what truck. Is, is it like <laughs> how many kilograms? <laughs> <laughs> the banter moments they, they have, it's a fucking nightmare. It's yeah. terrifying. If you've got nothing to say with your dialogue and you're not good at it, why linger on it for so goddamn? Like, there's not a rule that says you must have at least this many seconds of dialogue before your characters get abducted by aliens just start yep. your fucking scene i wouldn't have been like what the fuck happened are these guys from louisiana do they have trucks how much do they weigh <laughs> just start your scene so yeah so the aliens show up the one guy <laughs> runs away he of course stumbles and falls the other guy falls so goddamn hard i feel yeah. like i was worried about this actor <laughs> Right, I'm like, yep. do they go through concussion protocols here? He does that little uh, bounce that the human yes. body does. <laughs> right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. As near as I can tell, something pretty interesting just happened off camera at this moment. No, we do not see the aliens. <laughs> so we're going to pause for a quick break while you catch your breath. But we'll be back in a flash with even more unidentified. B-U-S-Y-D-O-N-K-E-Y Busy Donkey. What's the donkey busy doing? Being busy? Absolutely not. But, no. but people no. love it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I heard the applause, but. Hey, I, I hey, so. guys, what's going on? Yeah. So Noah hacked into my live journal from 2002 and he read it at the open mic at the coffee shop. Black coffee has an open mic? No, it's, it's the other place. Um, Java Joe's. Oh, Java Joe's. I like that place. Look, Heath. If you didn't want people snooping on your stuff, you shouldn't have written a blog called The 9-11 of My Heart. And also, you should have uh, got IP Vanish. Heather was very important to me at the time. Uh, Heath, I'm you're supposed to just... I mean, what's IP Vanish? IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. A VPN is a super important tool that helps you browse this internet safely. You can use a VPN on your computers, tablets, iPhones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. I don't know. It sounds good, but I just spent all my money on the CDs you were selling. A wise purchase indeed. Thing. But for listeners of this show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off. Just $349 for the first month or $3149 for the whole year. Wow, even I can afford that. Where do we sign up? Just go to IPVanish.com slash awful to claim your 65% savings. They have plans that start at just $349 or $3149 a year. This is the time to sign up. With our discount and their current promotional offerings, you can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Show these guys some love. They're repeat sponsors. Remember, it's IPVanish.com slash awful to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Okay, so no more snooping on my old blog? I mean, if I hadn't printed it out. Yeah. Come on! You printed it? He wrote his own lyrics to Boulevard of Broken Dreams. No! They're, it's, it's, they're, they are they're supplemental. It's not exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone's super excited for our fair and balanced story this month on whether or not aliens exist. Frank, what do you got for me? Okay, well, I've got literally dozens of debunked UFO sightings, most of which are identical to very similar claims. I've also got sworn affidavits and a tremendous amount of literature proving that people fake this stuff and lie about it on a very regular basis. And I've got all the science, like all of it. And it shows that kind of intergalactic travel that people attribute to aliens is almost certainly physically impossible. All right. All right. That's good stuff. And Steve. Oh, um, I met some guys who said they, they got got by aliens and um, also they're not lying. 
And I got God, huh? Anything else? Yeah, um, a guy who won't tell me his name. He worked for a government agency he can't prove, and he says it's real, and he's real. So, sorry, the last thing you said. You said, and he's real? Yeah, he's real, super real. The person? All right, well, you know, that sounds like great stuff from both of you. This is going to be really? an awesome issue. Sorry, okay, boss, uh, but what Steve just said is like, I mean, literally nothing. People said that he heard, and and then that person heard from another guy who wouldn't even say his name, apparently. That's, like, less than hearsay. Okay, but, like, a lot of people say that aliens are real. Mm. Yeah, okay, if you offered to print it in our magazine, a lot of people would say the moon is made out of cheese. That is a terrible way to present information and to find out what's true. We're journalists. You know what? I think he's right. He is? Yep, next Thank month's you. issue is the moon made out of cheese. Yes, finally. Okay. Hey, podcast listener, do you like speed? How about the emotion of anger? Do you want to hear about the ninth combination of those phenomena? Then why not head over to patreon.com slash godawful, where for as little as a dollar, you can help support the show and you'll get access to 60 bonus episodes and counting, including our most recent review of the Fast and the Furious Niner. Just listen to what you're missing. No, no, no. None of these children were alive. They literally <laughs> weren't alive. Thank you. You are not happy to see Han. I am happy to I see Han. I listened to Han on vinyl. <laughs> Fuck everybody. <laughs> Swings across it with his car like Tarzan. But here's the crazy part, right? Yeah, tell us what it the crazy be... part of that is, Eli. <laughs> here's the thing. So, you know, when you hold a gun and <laughs> you um, come on it, yep. <laughs> why don't they make the whole car out of NOS? That's I feel like not... you would want a whole race of NOS. <laughs> Once again, that's patreon.com slash godawful for access to our patron bonus episodes. And more stuff at higher levels. Because the only thing Vin Diesel understands less than acting is magnets. He's very confused by magnets. Very confused. Everyone is so. And we're back for even more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Lauren catching Roy on his way into work to tell him about that last scene with the fishermen. Yeah. So aliens attacked two drunk guys in Louisiana or there were two drunk guys in Louisiana. Which one of those two things definitely <laughs> happened. And by the way, so Brad's reaction to every piece of UFO evidence or, or claim is to say rural people are inferior to us and stupid. Hey, hey, Brad, Brad, I get it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, they, they try to counter this. They're like, UFO sightings don't just happen in the South. They also happen where people are. Right. Yeah, exactly. Literally, it's pointed out that California is actually the number one state for sightings of UFOs. And I was like, yeah, California is the number one state for, you know, people and like yeah. all the things that people do. Well, and the guy and we the guy who points that out is the religion editor, Darren. <laughs> OK, <laughs> I have to talk about Darren. <laughs> I I do not know this for sure, but I think Darren walked in the first day on set and they were like, and this is whatever his name is. He's going to be playing Darren. And he went, hello. And then he was like, fuck, I just did a voice. And they were like. Um, Do you normally say hi. hello? <laughs> yep. This is how I Say hello talk. again, regular. Hello. Mm. Just shake it out. He got stuck. As someone who did their job in a fake British accent for a year and a half, I see a kindred spirit in Darren's performance. So Darren <laughs> delivers virtually every line in this movie as though it's the culmination of his very particular set of skills speech, right? <laughs> Regardless of what's going on, he's delivering it to somebody like he's going to kill them once they finished comprehending this sentence. Yeah. <laughs> and he will start out full tilt crazy. Yep. They're like, Darren, you're our religion editor here at Both Sides Magazine. Sorry that you lost all the sides every week, by the way. <laughs> what do you think about aliens? And he's like, I don't believe in aliens, but I do believe in demons. And everyone's just like, <laughs> okay. Wait, what? Thanks, Darren. Is that... Is that related to you? Okay. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, I really wanted the cooking guy to come in. I believe in aliens. I think they're pasta. Are you <laughs> my story now? Are you doing a voice now? Are you trying to do a voice like Darren? 
Darren got to be part of the story by saying it was his thing. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we meet Darren, and then we cut into Keith's office, right, where Randy, the abductee that wouldn't talk to him, the greasy-faced abductee that wouldn't talk to him earlier, he's calling Keith. He's ready to talk now. He's had more experiences. Well, he's not ready to talk, though. Well, right. He, <laughs> he calls this magazine, and he's like, I'm not talking over the phone. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you are. You are, though. Yeah, though. <laughs> what are you planning to do then? He's like, he's like, you have to come see me in person. He's like, you're all the way in Texas. I'm, you know, wherever the hell we are. I don't know. It never really specifies. I'm the airplane distance yeah, away. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Exactly. Um, he's like, but I've had more experiences. I'm like, dude, everyone has always had more experiences. Okay, tighten up. <laughs> Let's give me some information here. Okay, if somebody's listening over the phone with like a tap, they know that you're now saying I'm not talking. It's not help you. You you've tipped them off now. Yeah, right. I really wanted it to flash cut over to an alien like talking to his boss. No, he's talking to a reporter, but it's probably just for some sex stuff or something. <laughs> no need to look into it. <laughs> so. But while he was in his office not being part of that scene, Keith apparently heard Darren's take on this somehow. So the next scene is <laughs> him taking Darren, the religion editor, to the deli for some juice so they can talk about it. I, I have to talk about my favorite character in the movie, <laughs> Manny is at the deli. Manny? <laughs> Manny at the deli, who... You ever see, you see it occasionally where someone's just excited to be in a movie and you're like, oh, look at him. It seems <laughs> yeah, like he's having yeah. a good time. Manny might as well be like stamping his SAG after cart every time he speaks. <laughs> well, hello, guys. More from my delicious cart of juices and baked goods. <laughs> 58, so. 59. <laughs> I'm done. So, and... This is such an exciting part of the movie, too, because the two of them sit down. We haven't brought up demons yet, right? So all of us know at this moment that the movie is about to go next level crazy, but it hasn't gotten there yet. And it's just such a giddy moment. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> and Darren explains that he doesn't believe in aliens because they aren't in the Bible. And I wrote in my notes, man, a lot of roads will lead you to Rome. <laughs> well, I, I made a joke in my notes. I'm like, uh, you know, so I guess what? You don't believe in germs either. And then I realized that stopped being funny because exaggeration died in the Trump administration. <laughs> yeah. But Keith responds to this, right? He's like, oh, but just because the Bible doesn't mention something doesn't mean that it's like, and Darren's like, have you been reading the Bible? That's what I thought. You fat bitch. And it's like, well, <laughs> no, that's not a... Uh, that's not a counter to what he nope. just said. Nope, sure isn't. <laughs> this movie is pretty sure it is. Did your voice go up like half an octave? Did you forget? <laughs> no, no. This is me, Darren. That's, this is normal? So, yeah. So, we check back in on the magazine office where Roy is telling Keith that he, he can go and talk to this Randy guy again, but he has to take Brad with him in a very, like, but your little brother has to come too kind of a way. Right. Only if your little brother hated you, didn't want to go with you because that's what Brad yeah, is doing. Right. The entire movie, Brad will be like, I hate this so much. It's so fucking stupid. I have all the information I need. Please don't send me back to him. I'm going back to Hickville. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, right. And he's like, and while you guys are in Texas, you can swing by Louisiana too. It's, it's adjacent. That's close. <laughs> right. <laughs> Also, we get the most important character in the movie here for the first oh, time. Oh, yes. Pensive old guy. We get pensive old <laughs> mysterious man who <laughs> will do three seconds of acting for the first hour and a half of the movie until it's almost over. Right now, he's just picking up a copy of Both Sides magazine at his local Barnes and Noble. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but... What it says in the cover of my favorite part, <laughs> it says, the future of the worker, are unions obsolete? <laughs> is this is the fair and balanced journalism so of both sides. All right. So so we cut to Louisiana so they can talk to the other abductee, not the guy who actually got abducted, but the guy who ran better. Yeah. Okay. There is no way that's that 
Batman's real hair. It, that is action figure <laughs> hair, right? <laughs> On his head. I'm getting the good plugs because I'm going to be in a Hollywood movie. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> I'm getting these done at the mall next to Aunt Annie's pretzels. No spared <laughs> expense. <laughs> Give me a cheese jalapeno. Yes. <laughs> Not the plugs, not the plugs. Oh, I got cheese jalapeno plugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why they offer those. <laughs> and this is the first of the like absolutely wonderful scenes where Keith is entirely credulous and Brad's just like, so you were drunk? And he's like, no, no, I was drinking. <laughs> yes, yes. But I wasn't drunk. <laughs> okay. Are you Jewish? I'm Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> we also get this explanation uh, he's describing the UFO experience and he's like, so it got louder as it got closer. Yeah. And Brad's like, uh, yeah, cool. So like all things that make noise. <laughs> hey, you know what? Tell me if something gets softer as it gets closer <laughs> and I'll write a story. about. Or I'm just going to assume physics work the same in your story as they work everywhere else, unless you specify otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the boss of me. I'm going to yell this story at Heath when he's trying to close on a Friday. You don't <laughs> tell me. <laughs> well, and he's also the first of several characters in this movie. They're going to go like, yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to tell you what happened no matter what those government men in those dark suits tell me to say. Right. Spoiler alert, listener. They will set up the government men in dark suits throughout the movie. They will <laughs> never show up. No. no. Also, I feel like those guys should just get some... Uh, Light suits, right? <laughs> Nobody would ever see them coming. Just a yeah. whole lot of good subterfuge there. Just get some, like, I don't know, like that blue and white one with the, the nice, like, summer suit. Tan. You go tan. Sure. Like Obama. Maybe tan. Yeah. Also, oh, very important. When the aliens came to abduct his friend, this guy with the action figure hair smelled sulfur. Okay. Again, we've already let you in on the secret that this movie's perspective is that aliens are demons tricking people. But demons apparently can't cover up their smell. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys invented like intergalactic space travel. You didn't get like Old Spice high end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we still smell like rotten eggs and farts. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> All right. So and then we get after that, just in case any of that was too subtle for you. We have a whole scene where Keith recaps that conversation to Darren over the phone, right? Yeah. So he's like, oh, yeah, Grandma, th those are the men in black that he was talking about. You remember the movie <laughs> with Tommy Lee Jones and that black feller? Uh -huh. yeah. Pug, talking pug. <laughs> <laughs> and Darren, the religion expert here, is like, oh, y sulfur, that, that means the devil. That's um, That's brimstone. Yeah. And Keith is like, yeah, okay. Um there wasn't any fire though. So like um All right, well anyway, thanks. Uh <laughs> glad I called you the religion editor no for this sports. story. And then he turns to Brad who is like I hate this, I hate you. Can we go home? And he's like, "Look, Brad, until you can prove that this is a giant two-man hoax, we are tied. Aliens might exist." Right, right. So Brad's <laughs> assignment is to figure out who is making money off all this UFO stuff if it isn't real. Brad's job that he's getting paid for is to write a story for a magazine that will be sold for money about who can make money off a UFO. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he's he's going to need some help. This is where we get, again, another fucking fantastic insight into Rich Cristiano. What happened here? Okay, he calls Vince, <laughs> baby Rob Schneider, yes, right. and he's like, hey, baby Rob Schneider, Help me do our jobs. And he's like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to help you do our jobs. He's like, I'll tell you what, if you help me do our jobs, I'll take you out to dinner. And then baby Rob Schneider counters with, and I get to bring a date. Yeah. What? The okay. So what happens here <laughs> is Brad is now going to take Vince and Vince's girlfriend, the two of them together on a date for his help with, no, there are not demon aliens. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. I was assuming that Vince was, that was like kind of their code for we're going to do a threesome again with my girlfriend, but I, they never really spell it out. It seems like oh. he did want a dinner. 
so much better <laughs> than what happens in the movie. So, okay. Then we cut over to Brad and Keith interviewing Randy. They, they have to fly to Texas to, to follow up with him. <laughs> yeah. And he explains that he fell asleep in his chair and heard voices. So Brad's like, oh, so a nightmare. So you, you're describing you a nightmare? dreamed a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and Randy's like, no, no, that's not. They were putting voices in my head. <laughs> yeah. At one point, Brad says, is it possible that you hallucinated this? And Randy says, no. And I wrote in my notes, I'm sorry, it's not possible. <laughs> it's impossible that you hallucinated this. Also, you keep saying they. What the fuck is they? <laughs> right. I'm not accepting. I also reject that. Right. And it's not like this doesn't matter. Randy explains that the voices in his head are genocidal. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's like, the voices in my head say that some of the people are going to have to be killed off because of what group they belong to. And it's just like, you guys aren't backing slowly away. Why are you not backing slowly away? <laughs> yeah. But the Christiana audience was like, all right, let's hear them out. Who? <laughs> Very importantly, <laughs> let's get a ranking. All right. Because I was watching Tucker Carlson the other night and he wasn't in my head, but he said similar things. <laughs> Yeah, and then, of course, they, some more of that clever, rich Cristiano writing where he goes, yeah, them government fellas told me not to talk to you, but I just couldn't keep quiet. And they're like, government officials? And he's like, yeah, they talked to me, and they talked to that kid and that air traffic controller and Diane Turner. And it's like, weird that you would have used her full name, the character we haven't met, <laughs> rather than like just referring to her as a, a, a job or a general demographic description. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, who the fuck is Diane Turner? And then one of the characters in the movie is like, wait, who is Diane Turner? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and then the reporters go to talk to her. She is not someone we've met in the movie. No. There's no reason or for this named. setup. No. <laughs> is there like some universe of the Christianos where it's like, oh, Diane fucking Turner. Get the fuck out of here. Oh. Really? Maybe that's just the Jay and Silent Bob of their movies or yeah. something. <laughs> there you go. It's like, it's like how we were all supposed to care about the Seinfeld lady at the end of Black Widow, but with Diane Turner. There you go. Okay. All right. I haven't seen that yet. So Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. So, yeah, so she, but she tells them that she saw the aliens that night, too, and she saw Randy's truck with nobody in it, and she smelled sulfur. And she says she called the police. I really wanted a shot of that. Hello, police. I just saw a cloud eat a guy. <laughs> and it smells like farts. Huh. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I do know Randy, yeah. I smelled demonic sulfur. Or, I mean... Sulfur. Or regular. It's, it's one of the it's others, just, though. Or eggs. Could have smoked. Could have been a too. lot of different things now that I think about it. <laughs> okay. Just to be clear, the conceit of the movie is Satan, the prince of darkness, is controlling aliens yep. who show up for tiny little pranks in the American South, yeah. and that's it. Well, mostly yeah. in California, Heath, actually. The number one <laughs> place for their little pranks is California. Okay. <laughs> We don't actually get any of those in this no. movie, though. Uh -uh. Yeah. So, okay, so they leave, and douchey Brad doesn't believe her because fuck bald eagles and apple pies. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> yeah, Keith is like, I don't know, she seems pretty sane to me, and I wrote in my notes, has this movie never heard of wrong? <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's always either, well, either that's 100% true or they're lying for profit. <laughs> yeah. And this is where they get in their first argument about the Bible. He's like, yeah, I don't I don't think it's fucking demons, man. Did you hear Heath sum it up just now? And he's like, no, no, the Bible's the word of God. And Brad's like, cool. So you've read it, right? You've read the word of God. Yeah, that you I have. In. And I would like to tell you that cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so and it's even dumber than that, right? Because he says, if the Bible is so good, then why don't I ever see you reading it? Right, like. Like, I, I really enjoyed Dune, but neither of you guys have ever seen me reading it, right? Like, you don't have to ultimately... Say, that's silly on so many fucking levels. But, of course, it's there so that Keith can just sit there and be like, mm, I don't read the Bible enough. Damn. Yeah, the conclusion he reaches from that conversation is not, 
oh yeah, obviously not the word of God. It's I should read my Bible more. That is the word of God. I really do have to get yeah, around to that. Right. Yes. <laughs> also, a uh, pensive old man is now writing a letter to Keith. As he's coming back. Yeah. Major way. So meanwhile, back at both sides HQ, the UFO stories are really starting to take off. <laughs> Yeah, the editor is summing it up for us. He's like, all right, everyone, remember, the two sides of the alien debate is aliens are real or everyone who has ever claimed to see an alien is all part of the same money-making conspiracy. Yes, right, right. I love Lauren at this point. She's like, uh, we're getting a lot of great emails. She's like, great, find me some credible emails about UFOs that we can print in the next magazine. <laughs> I'm like, that is a huge fucking ask, dude. <laughs> and then Keith talks some trash to Brad, the atheist here. He's like, hey, Brad, you should really worry about finding evidence to support your own theory. To be clear, Brad's theory is no. Right. Nope. Not that. <laughs> and then the boss, Roy, comes in and he's like, hey, Brad, you need to show me evidence of aliens not existing if you're going to win the thing. <laughs> yeah. Brad, I really need you to prove that negative, buddy. Okay, this is serious. <laughs> well, yeah, though, they, they're, they literally they have this whole conversation of, man, our magazine sure is making money off of this whole UFO thing. By the way, Brad, can you find ev any evidence anywhere of anyone making money off of UFOs? No, no, still haven't found any. OK, all right. Just uh Want to prove that the end of the scene doesn't know about the beginning of the scene. Moving on. <laughs> so, yeah, so Keith goes back to his office where he gets the letter from Pensive Old Guy, uh, which just says, you know, I've been reading your stories. Meet me at the old library. No cops. Yeah, come along. No. <laughs> hey, can I just say this? <laughs> Nobody reliable has ever said come alone <laughs> yeah right no yeah if it's just basically you and kidnappers then yeah you're probably <laughs> in bad company and also like can you just make a reporter go anywhere at any time with a letter because i mean so that, that feels like a system that can only work until eli finds out about it right i, I was literally i was just like tucker carl oh and then you know what i realized Someone literally did that to Tucker Carlson like two weeks ago. They were like, Tucker, it's me, Mr. FBI. We, they've been tracking you. And he was like, they've been tracking me. Oh, you're right. I was like, no, we haven't, you asshole. <laughs> and he was like, oh. oh. <laughs> you're right. That's true. <laughs> but we do know you're a Russian spy. I am a Russian spy. That's true. They do know that I'm a Russian spy. Bring a bow tie back to the drop point. I'm writing <laughs> right. this. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why am I doing the voice? Yeah, but so but Keith goes to the library to meet the old pensive guy. He's like, "Hi, I'm Keith," and he's like, "My name is." Oh, you almost got me. I'm, no, I'm but I'm I'm too mysterious for that. I yeah, don't a source that won't give you his name is going to be super useful for reliable <laughs> reporting. Let me tell you. Well, especially one that works in a government division that he'd rather not divulge at this time. <laughs> but he would rather divulge it in like five more seconds. He's like, ah, it was, it was the LF. I'm, I'm in men in, I'm in men black LF life forms. L, LF stands for life forms. Yeah he, yeah, he won't tell us what branch of the government he worked in, but he worked in the LF division of it. <laughs> the, oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that include like mushrooms and like <laughs> amoeba waterboarding a mushroom? Tell us what you know. <laughs> Wait, they keep growing when we do. This is not working out well, guys. <laughs> and there's this priceless moment at the end of the scene. You could tell Riz Christiana was so proud of this. Yes. He's like, the question isn't if aliens are real. The question is why? Why what? Cut. Cut. <laughs> yep. Why literally is over. <laughs> the guy from the life forms unit is like, okay, well, what's to gain from these encounters? Are you going to cut? That was the last. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. He's like, well, I don't believe in aliens, but what I think isn't the reveal that we need right now. And then so the whole fucking thing pays to black. Qui bono, bono, bono. <laughs> so, all right. So, but that night, there's yet more alien activity, and we get the best of the alien abductions. Yes. <laughs> She's so good. I, like, of all time, not just of this movie. <laughs> right. So, this woman walks out of her apartment, looks up in the sky, sees something that we don't see, of course, because they didn't have the budget for that. And then she just <laughs> does a fucking header. <laughs> yep. Just, 
<laughs> she falls. <laughs> she falls four times in one time. Like so much worse than the other guy for absolutely no reason. And then she runs to her. This is my favorite part. She runs to the car, and it's like key fumble, key fumble. Like the murderer is chasing you. <laughs> But her key fumbling is so over, like little like paper dragons are popping out of it and it's hitting like her in the cat face, <laughs> trying to do the. Yeah, it's so stupid. Oh, well, the thing is, is they gave her way too long for this. So, so yeah, so she falls like she thought there was going to be a slip and slide. There, she gets up, she goes to unlock her door, and she's like, "Well, they still are are rolling." Okay, I drop my keys. Oh, she picks up her keys. She can see that the key has an unlock button on it. By the way, when she picks the keys up, she fumbles at it for another. 45 seconds looks at the camera she says are we done oh there's the aliens <laughs> fumble, fumble, fumble. also it's literally one key and she's like flipping through one key like it's a janitor <laughs> giant thing right. I'm watching you if she here's my question if she had made it into the car would she have outrun the aliens Right. Do we get a scene where someone makes it into the car and then the greys are just like tapping on the I glass got- like come on and she's like <laughs> Subaru outback motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so we cut to the news reporters interviewing her after the fact, right? And they have essentially the same conversation they had with Randy. The aliens are communicating with her telepathically, telling her genocidal shit. Yeah. (laughs) The aliens told me they love evolution and genocide. They mostly watch Matt Powell videos, but yeah, they're pretty cool. (laughs) Yeah. She repeats that. She's like, yeah, they, uh, they said we need to get cleansed to experience the next level. And then Keith is like, of evolution, yes! Right, yes. Next level of evolution. <laughs> I was like, wow, you should you should stop finishing sentences about eugenics. Like, even if you agree with them, don't finish them. Because that makes it worse. Yeah, she's like, yeah, the aliens said an event was coming. And I'm like, an event is coming. Those are some pretty good fucking aliens. And then, of course, Brad chimes in and he's like, are you sure that you're not just a big Fat, stupid head. <laughs> yeah. He walks around her apartment and he's like, hey, you have a bunch of books on aliens. Are you predisposed to believe in this bullshit? And she's like, no. No. Uh-uh. So. Well, and Darren is a little nervous about his books. He notices that she has a lot of books on the paranormal. <laughs> and Darren says like, hey, you know, do you believe in the devil and demons? And she's like, no, but I believe in paranormal. And he goes, oh, that's just the way the devil works. And I'm like, oh, it, it just keeps getting out of here, doesn't it? From <laughs> yeah. here, it's just all downhill. <laughs> Devil's down there in his office. All right. Step one, palmistry. <laughs> step two, we'll come back around to it. It's, it's going to get to profit. Trust me, it gets to profit eventually. And Darren has this moment. Darren, deep voice, aliens or demon Darren has this moment where he's like, come on, be serious. Why would aliens travel across the universe? A wizard died to sacrifice himself right. to himself because he's mad about future right. crimes. That was such a weird argument. I had it down <laughs> on my notes as seems like an awful lot of trouble for aliens to come all this way. Are you sure it wasn't the supreme battle of good and evil playing out between the creator of the universe and his adversary vis-a-vis your alien abduction story? Come on, look at this skee-ball ramp. Obviously. <laughs> I want a, a six-year-old to wander into the room, and I'm a dinosaur! All right, now we got three opinions, all three sides we need to report on. <laughs> Is that guy a dinosaur? Well, and she's just going like, I don't believe in the Bible. I believe in reincarnation. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's fucking team three and team five having the two plus two debate the movie. (laughs) (laughs) But she decimates Darren. She's like, I believe in reincarnation. They're like, Darren, do you have anything to say to that? And he's like, nope, she's damned to hell forever. (laughs) Darren, are you specifically not looking at the lady, even though she's in the room and you were talking to her four (laughs) seconds ago? No, nope. I can't see her. I don't. I can't see her. Know what she said, uh, she's all burning in the fire. <laughs> and then we, so we got to Keith's house, where damn it, he just doesn't have time to go to Bible study with his wife. He is working on a trapper keeper from 1991, <laughs> the year where Brad did his porns. Yeah, this is a laptop with a pull start, like a fucking chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so weird that we all had a line on it. I, I said it looked like he was uh, typing on a spring loaded trash can lid. Did, did computers really look <laughs> like that at the time? Also, I'm sure that this is true of the movie and I just didn't notice, but this is when I noticed that the wife and Brad are both Australian. Mm -hmm. Why are there random Australians in this? Did people catch Australian throughout the filming? (laughs) 
<laughs> well, they had to explain that because it was just so bizarre earlier where she was like, but remember, Brad introduced us in uh, college. And it's like, oh, there now the two Australians make sense. <laughs> She's also a big like Christian music star in Australia. Oh, like, is she? oh yeah. there you come. All right. And at the very end of the scene here, this is a moment that made me laugh so fucking hard. She has the like, you won't come to Bravo Australia with me. And he's like, no, I can't. I'm too busy with my my giant laptop. And she does that thing. The, the direction was, and then you look back at him longingly. Except what it is is she like pokes her head back in like, I'm sorry, did you say, say anything? <laughs> no? Nope. Touch, touch the thermostat? <laughs> okay. Oh, did you say something now? No. no okay, okay, right, right. So, okay. So then we we head back to the office where Roy is just going to sum up where we are in the movie for Grandma real quick. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Brad, how you doing? He's like, I got an ironclad case that you guys are all full of shit. <laughs> he says, Lauren, did you find any good emails? I wanted to cut over her. And she's like the first detective from Dark City or something like that. She's drawing <laughs> spirals on the wall. I read emails about aliens is what I did. <laughs> but no, she's found she's found good emails. And Keith chimes in here. He's like, okay, well, you might have a bunch of evidence and Lauren has emails, but I have a random stranger who won't say his name, but he worked for the men in black. And he says here, he's off the record. So he understands literally none of what off the record. Means. <laughs> I didn't actually meet him at all. Now that I mention it, I didn't mention it. <laughs> and now it's time for such an excellent scene. It's time for, did you order the code red on Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, yeah. So the meeting wraps up. And after everybody, after Roy leaves, after the boss leaves, Brad's like, oh, one more thing before everybody takes off. Darren thinks we're all going to hell for not loving Jesus enough, doesn't he, Darren? And they just go around the room, like with Brad demanding that everybody line up by salvation. <laughs> yeah. And what we're supposed to get out of this scene is... Wow, Brad's a real jerk for saying that incredibly cruel and insane thing that Darren believes. Right. I just wanted to just cut over to like Steve the Nazi and they'd be like, oh, I bet you're going to point out that Steve is a Nazi, aren't you, huh? <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> yeah, but so he, he goes around the room asking everybody if they've received Christ and know that they'll go to heaven when they die. Like atheists tend to ask. Oh, yeah. It's the first thing that comes up. It's our version of grace. We just go around the table. It's our icebreaker. So, and, and what's amazing about it is that it all exists so that Darren can deliver his, yes, I've received Christ moment the way that Rich Cristiano has been waiting his entire life for an opportunity to do. <laughs> Every time he's been in the same Starbucks as us, he's been <laughs> practicing the speech, I hope getting that himself pumped up. Ask me if I've received Christ because Wish I they have. <laughs> Wish they did. I'm all hyped up on my juicy juice. I've received Christ. No, sir. I've received. No, no. I have. Ask me again. Ask Is me this again. anyone's cell phone? Oh, no, never mind. That wasn't me. <laughs> so Brad, ask me again. But of course, Keith can't say that he's received Christ. So we get this big dramatic moment where he like runs weeping from the room. And I just wrote my notes. Hey, I think if someone asks you about a basic tenant of your religion and you cry and run out of the room, that's on your religion, not the person who asked you. Right. Right. Yeah, that's the the whole scene is there so that Keith he can say, what about you, Keith? Are you confident that you'll go to heaven? Are you fully and truly Christian? And Keith goes, I, 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 and he runs away, right? <laughs> and we're all supposed to be there, <laughs> sitting there going like, wow, that Brad sure is a jerk. <laughs> oh, Brad. <laughs> Why did you have to ask the Christian if he was a Christian? And then, so Keith storms out. Darren follows him to his office and demands to know why Keith isn't confident that he'll spend eternity in heaven. It's like me yelling at Heath for flirting badly at an atheist convention. What the fuck happened in there? Get your head in the game. <laughs> I, I like hair. <laughs> what? So, yeah, so, so Keith mopes his way home. His wife's been worried about him, but he doesn't have time to deal with her bullshit. <laughs> Keith. Did someone ask you if you're your religion? No. <laughs> I want to be alone. Yeah, he's he's full blown sit in a dark room and flashback to voices from the last scene levels of disturbed by that <laughs> question. And he, he has to act out being lectured 
by the atheist and the Christian in his head. And like, <laughs> he's literally like punching pillows. Yes. The wrestler. It's so good. He's trying to act so hard. It's the best. Oh, it's fantastic. And But just then, as he's wrestling his pillow, he notices that unread Bible from earlier. Oh. So we don't get the Bible reading montage. They cheat us out of that. That happens off screen. So we cut straight from him noticing the Bible to him going in to apologize to his wife for, for being so short with her earlier. And he's going to be Christian from now on. We have heard this speech literally hundreds of times. We no longer have to pay attention when it comes up in a movie. All of our notes are like, yeah, you haven't been Jesus see enough from now. You're going to be Jesus. It's the third. Yep. Act. Yep. I, I just <laughs> all I've got is like my my fucking F7, which is he just talked to God and has re refinanced his soul or whatever. Yeah. I got an Apple shortcut on my iPhone that just types <laughs> it into Google Docs. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I, I thought this movie was about motherfucking aliens, so I need a minute to recalibrate, but first, <laughs> let me get back to the hard sell. Can Keith convert Brad to Christianity before it's too late? Is that the plot of the movie now? Will we abandon the alien abduction plotline pretty much entirely from this point forward? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the tangential conclusion of Unidentified. How about Choco Sugar Bombs? Now he's going to get all jumpy. Yeah, no, he'll get jumpy. That's true. Hey, guys, what you doing? Ah, oh, dang it, Heath. What? What happened? You ruined your birthday surprise. Okay, so my birthday surprise is cereal? Yeah. So, you know how you're turning 40 soon? Yeah, like super, super well, okay, soon. Okay, not, it's not till the end of August. Yeah, but that's soon, well, It's though. like pretty much tomorrow. Yeah, okay, really. yes. I'm eventually... Far from now turning 40. Yes, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, well, we wanted to make you feel better about being old and get you some cereal to make you feel young again. Because you're so very, very old. But, okay. you know, it's got all this crazy amount of sugar in it. Yeah, and that would kill you because you are old. old okay, yeah. guys, if you want great tasting cereal without all the junk, why don't you just try Magic Spoon? What's Magic Spoon? Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. It's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four net grams of carbs, and only 140 calories in each serving. It's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Plus, you can build your own box or get a variety pack with the available flavors. They have cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, and cinnamon. Wow, that does sound good. Where do we get some? You just go to magicspoon.com slash gam to grab your delicious cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code GAM at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash GAM and use the code GAM to save $5. And a big thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. And a big thanks to you, Heath, for living for 40 years. Okay, just do the commercial. Okay, everyone, uh, I have the newest orders from our Dark Lord Satan. Yes. What are they? Right, right. So, uh, we're going to make ourselves look like aliens. Mm. Find people who believe in, like, you know, alien stuff. Mm. Or just non-Christians, really, and then abduct them. Mm. So, uh, they won't be Christian anymore. I have so many questions. None of that made sense. I don't understand. Yeah, no, I, I figured uh, there would be questions. Go ahead. Uh, why would being abducted by aliens make anyone less Christian? Ah, yeah, I... Uh, no idea. Next. Also, yeah, why would we get people who are already not Christian? Would, would we want to do this to Christians and reduce the... Right, yeah, total. yeah, yeah, you'd think so. But uh, no, uh, only people who are already into aliens or like witches or Wicca or also porn. I, I'm sorry, also porn? Why also would... porn, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just a messenger here. We, we take them up in the craft, we probe their butts, bing, bang, boom, less Christians. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Jerry? Uh, well, you know what? I'd appreciate it if you called me Balthazar the Undying, because, you know, we're at work, be professional. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Balthazar. Are you sure that uh, this is Balthazar isn't the Undying. Balthazar the Undying. Yeah. Are you sure that this isn't just 
an excuse to do butt stuff to the humans again. <laughs> what? No. No. Right, because no. we're demons, and I uh, feel like we get plenty of chances for that in hell. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, at the managerial level, actually... I, I mean, no, no, it's not It's not that. Satan said it's not that. Totally butt stuff. 100% what it is. Your butt stuff. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our hero going back to work this time as a real Christian. This is so <laughs> fucking stupid. They use an outdoor establishing shot of him showing up at work here. But we've never seen this place from outdoors, despite the fact that we've had 11 scenes. So we have no fucking idea where he is. <laughs> what are you establishing? Anyway, yeah, but he goes back in. He's a real Christian now. So he goes up to Brad, the one that asked him if he was a real Christian the other day, where he totally flubbed it. And he <gasps> apologizes. He passive aggressives the yeah, atheist. Yeah, exactly. He passive aggressively like, apologizes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, I was mean. I'm going to think better of you now. And so Brad, the atheist, is like, oh, cool. So, so I'm not going to hell forever, in your opinion? He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, still hell for you, but like... Not me. I'm uh, going to heaven. And uh, that was the end of my apology. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, by the way. Oh, and by the way, yes, yes. <laughs> I am a Christian. I will totally go to heaven. I decided yesterday. And br again, because Cristiano wrote this, it, Brad is just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> As opposed to an actual atheist reaction was like, oh, okay, that's boring. <laughs> so. Sorry, did a Bible on a string come across your field of vision somehow? <laughs> no. So, okay, so Darren was not with us when we interviewed Randy before. Remember Randy, the first abductee in the movie? Well, now they're going to go, they're going to fly. Good old one smudge Randy. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> so they're going to fly back to Texas for a third time to interview this guy. This time with Darren in tow. Their expense reports are weird looking. <laughs> Just like, talk to Randy for the seventh time. $900. <laughs> and, okay, so they're walking into Randy's house when Darren notices, quite Sherlock Holmesian of him, a, I think, racy magazine in his truck. Yeah, a demonic swimsuit issue. Swimsuit issue, yeah. <laughs> swimsuit issue, right. It couldn't be porn. <laughs> <laughs> not, not just regular demons, uh, alien demons. Right, swimsuit. yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they're heading in there. As they're heading in there, by the way, Brad is following up on his story about how UFOs are bullshit. He's talking to a UFO convention organizer who's telling him <laughs> that UFOs are bullshit. And the Cristiano brothers don't know how to do Audio from both sides of a phone call, apparently? No, Clearly. No, definitely not. It seems like that's not difficult, but they don't know about this. So Brad's just repeating everything yes. the person on the other side of the call says. So you're saying you're a con man to a reporter? I'm saying, yep. okay, all right. Yep. Yeah, oh, it's, it's beautiful. So we head back to Randy's. Darren's there. He's interrogating him. He finds out that Randy is a lapsed Christian whose wife hates Jesus with a fucking passion. She's a witch. <laughs> and uh, we know that because they're hanging out and then just out of nowhere, the wife's like, excuse me, gentlemen, would you like a drink of regular beverage <laughs> right now? <laughs> Not. She's got a tray dude, of shit said, just you smoking like dry ice. Or something. Normal. <laughs> Do you have anything that isn't in a goblet? No. <laughs> All right. Well, then... Uh, I'm going to pass. I only drink juicy juice. Well, yes. Darren's like <laughs> sizing her up for a fight or something, right? He's like glaring at her. She goes to leave and he columbos her with pagan words. <laughs> he goes, uh, Mary part. And she says, Mary part to you too. <laughs> well, okay. right. Because it's like shaving a haircut. You have to say it. Also, so this is like a Wiccan thing or like a... Witch yeah, thing? it's it's uh 
marry meet marry part marry meet again right so like that when you meet uh another wicked dude they say marry meet you say marry meet when you leave they, they say marry part and you're supposed to say marry part marry meet again so the fact that she just says marry part is kind of throwing shade at darren there it's also the tweest and silliest thing that's a part of wicca yeah so trying to make it seem scary <laughs> is hilarious <laughs> right. it's what a garden gnome says to a protagonist of a ya novel when they send them off on an adventure <laughs> Uh, Mary meet and Mary part and Mary yes. meet again. <laughs> I'll shoot you in the face, you witch can bitch. <laughs> but what we're setting up with that is that Randy has left himself open to demonic possession by fucking this witch lady, right? Not just that. He's like, you didn't notice your wife was a witch? And he's like, ah, she does her thing. <laughs> she drinks some blood up and all day. <laughs> I'm usually in my truck. <laughs> Jerk it off. Yeah. Jerk it off. <laughs> he asks about that too. He's like, and how long have you been reading those magazines like in your truck? And he's like, oh, you know, I don't read them. Come on. <laughs> also, are they saying that alien demon aliens only attack Wiccans? Well, because if you have the protection of Christ, they can't get to you. See? Yeah. So the, you have to, like, open yourself up to demonic possession by being insufficiently Christian or, you know, knowing your horoscope or something like but that. But the demon aliens already won if you're a Wiccan. Right, like, yeah. Shouldn't they be attacking? Yeah, they're, like, they're selling down. It's the MLM of spirituality. Close to Christian people to try to, like, win the score. See, this, <laughs> it's hard to know what their end game is, yeah. But the guys explained to him, Darren and Keith, explained to Randy that the aliens and, well, demons, whatever, are going to keep fucking with him until he becomes Christian. But he doesn't want to be Christian because his wife's going to be pissed. Yeah, my wife will be mad at me. Also, you guys are weird reporters. Can I say this is a weird <laughs> <laughs> twist? Right. So he's, yeah, he's clearly weirded out by this. But then there's a giant pause and he's come around and all three of them are like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yes. yeah. And then they touch each other way too much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I, I'm ready to become a Christian. And so they all gather around and lay they do hands. a huddle for Jesus. I feel like this is what the Christiana brothers did in real life. When they wrote this, they were like, yeah, 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 Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Scrum for Jesus. <laughs> Bring it down. Whisper, yes. Oh, and then we get, this is so amazing. We get a typing montage. And here's why. This is my theory. <laughs> Rich Cristiano wrote in the script journalism montage. He didn't realize at the time that that would just be shots of everyone typing, which would be really boring to look at. <laughs> yeah. And then he wouldn't admit that he just made a mistake when it came time to film this part. So he made no. him do it anyway. <laughs> he would not admit that. The best he came up with after he got made fun of was like, also, uh, plus, in, in addition to typing, they would have photos that they would be piecing together into a mosaic to solve the mystery. Oh, I really wanted it to pan back and there's just like a demon driving a spaceship winking at the <laughs> camera. I knew it. <laughs> yes. What were they solving with those photos? What were those piecing together to? No idea. No idea. And they, they, they have, but we see that. We see Brad and Vince typing together. We see Darren and uh, Keith going for a juice. <laughs> <laughs> we see Darren staring at Brad like he's trying to set him on fire with his mind. Why? Yeah. Stupid. So Brad, about <laughs> Jesus, you are going to go to hell. And, then, and the montage wraps up late that night. With Brad and Vince burning the midnight oil on their UFOs aren't really Christian demon monsters story. Vince has a scoop, right? Yeah. Vince was apparently in the middle of interviewing one of those convention organizers. And the guy was like, yeah, we're hiring people to fake UFO sightings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're not. We're not, not doing that is what I... I wrote my notes. Did he interview Hagrid? Just like, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, so they trash talk for a minute. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, old pensive man has been in the room with them this whole time. <laughs> Hello. Out of nowhere. 
here. He's just like, it's no joke, my friend. And everybody's like, dude, what the <laughs> fuck? Just where were you? It's the I middle was standing of the in night. the dark corner for, during your conversation. <laughs> when you guys talked about sports and your kids for like 40 minutes, I was trying to make it a hello. I'm the child of the night, but I, I'm glad I waited. I'm glad <laughs> no, I waited. I, you guys. I, all I had ready was something. You, one of you had to say joke so I could be like, no joke. And it took a while. <laughs> One of them's like, hey, man, how the fuck did you get in here? And he's like, the janitor let me in. Normal. What? (laughs) (laughs) And he goes, I don't think you realize just how important this UFO subject really is. And I'm like, nothing sane ever came after those words. (laughs) (laughs) He also tells his exact same story again. And Brad is like, okay. Do you have any proof of this? And they're like, God, Brett, stop asking people to say the things they think out loud. Asshole, my God. At one point, Vince is like, so who are these men in black? And the the secret source, the guy, the inside guy, he's like, well, they work for some government agency. It's like, really, that's it. We're they're really pinning it down for us there, old pencil I, guy. N- n- not my department. <laughs> no, I was in LFGD, Galaxy Defenders, Lifeform, LFGD. <laughs> Uh, they just named the Cleveland baseball team after us. Maybe you heard of it. <laughs> Guardians. <laughs> That's just a sad name. Yeah, it Whatever. is. It's, it's an improvement, but still. So, And then Brad's like, oh, come on, guys. It's all about money. To which old pensive guy says, the powers of darkness actually have a deeper agenda. And I'm like, okay, nothing sane ever came after that. <laughs> <laughs> he has this great moment where he's like, we couldn't have people believe too much in aliens. But also not too little. So we needed okay. people to believe in a medium so amount right. of a me- Medium <laughs> amount of alien stuff was your job. Was <laughs> as a man in black, a man in black, you would do medium aliens. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, okay, man, let's assume that you're right and these are demons. Why would demons fake alien sightings? And he's like, oh, good question. I think the world's probably going to end soon. And everyone in the movie's like, oh, yeah, normal, very yep, in person. Yep, good person opinion. That we're talking say, about. Say, the end is nigh, said the same character <laughs> in the movie. Okay. And this is where it reveals the actual whole goddamn point of the film, right? What he's saying is that aliens are trying to like acclimate people to the idea of alien abduction so that when the rapture happens, people will assume that all of those folks have just been abducted by aliens. How how does that help? Well, because then they won't know to turn their life over to Jesus quick while they still can. Oh. So it's like a there's like a scoring system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's like, yeah. When does when is the buzzer? Like, who <laughs> after the tribulation? Who has more points when? Yeah, is that? Got a, that's Jesus bat and clean up and yeah, the exactly. to stop him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then they try and do the like War of the Worlds callback because remember that from the beginning of the movie he's like, remember War of the Worlds? That was very real. Don't look it up on Wikipedia. People hallucinated alien crafts. And that was a demon test. That was the devil. What? <laughs> In what okay. way was that? Orson Welles is an antichrist test. <laughs> the pre-antichrist, you know. That was a trick by <laughs> Satan, the prince of darkness, that radio broadcast. Yeah. In 1938. And he's done none of that since. Yeah, so it, it, apparently he's shown up at their office in the middle of the damn night with essentially no new information, right? Just a big speech to give everybody, you know, other than to say, like, I'm pretty sure this movie will end with the rapture. So he, he goes to leave. Brad has one last question, though. Brad, the atheist asshole, he's like, one more thing before you go. And he's like, yes. And he's like, have you received Jesus and accepted him as your personal savior? And everyone in the room is like, well, f- a fucking course he did, man. Why yeah, man. You-, you think he's an atheist rapture <laughs> believer? <laughs> Why would you ask that? <laughs> <laughs> and then because he did it mid mysteriously wandering away, we have to watch him be like, okay, now I'm mysteriously. Yes. <laughs> Can I use your bathroom before I go, though? Do you have like a, <laughs> so, I'd prefer a single stall if you've got one of those. Okay, I'll take what I can get, though. It's in a hurry. So, yeah. So, he leaves. So, the big article comes out, and the whole damn world is reading it. 
Yeah, and no one's reading it harder than Manny. I know he hasn't been important to the movie, nope. but he is fucking reading the shit out of it in his 10 seconds of screen time, damn it. And this magazine, Both Sides Magazine, is making a bunch of money, and the movie does not realize why that fucks up their whole thing. Yep. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah, so we see this long, just way over long montage of, you know, people of all ages and both races reading the magazine. And I'm like, by the end of it, I'm like, okay, you have now panned by all the people on Earth that still read magazines in 2006, okay? Like, <laughs> that's all of them right there. We cut to the office. They're getting so many emails. They're doing such a great job. <laughs> <laughs> and Brad's like, I'm winning the journalism uh, like 10 to 1 in terms of emails who voted for atheism. What does that mean? Apparently they were doing a straw poll <laughs> yeah. for how they reacted. <laughs> yeah, that's nonsense. But Darren is like, that's actually a really good point. But uh, God doesn't care about the score. He could win if he wants. <laughs> he's oh, not try. He's, he's not even really. Not to. It's just a scrimmage for God. This is Darren's big ponage speech. And yes. you just know tears were running down Rich Cristiano's yep. face as he wrote. They're like, when you die, you're going to go to hell. And I think this is a good system. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, so he goes like, when you die, and I know you're going to die. And I'm like, that is a dark place to start your argument, Darren. But yes, this rant was what this whole fucking movie was about. This whole like, you know, God doesn't care if only a few people believe in it because we're better than you people and we'll watch you all burn. Your flesh will be on fire. And then once it's burned away, you'll have new flesh that'll be on fire again. And then everybody's just looking at Darren like, yep, Darren's really getting Brad good. <laughs> yeah. You, you deserve this, Brad. You did ask him if he believes the thing he's saying very forcefully at you right now. That's right. Turn a lake of fire. So you want to get a juice? Yeah. But ultimately, hey, let's not just glaze over the fact that the very best that the Christians can do when they're crafting the entire world from their fucking imagination is you're going to wish you had agreed with me when you're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he also, I love that Brad welches on baby Rob Schneider on their three-way date. And and Vince is like, you know what? Just for that, I'm going to be a Christian now. I'm yeah, a Christian right. now, too, just because of the... Right. So, and then, and then, of course, it turns out that it's Brad's turn to go get everybody their fucking juice boxes and their Capri Suns or whatever the fuck. Right? Yeah. So he goes to get, he's very upset. He goes to get the juice boxes. And because it's the Cristiano Brothers, you know, this movie has one glorious scene left to offer. You've been sitting so here the good. whole time thinking, is this going to fucking end with the goddamn rapture? So just then, Brad walks back in with yes, juices in tow. <laughs> and he's coming back into, yes, the post-rapture office of Both Sides magazine. Okay. Okay. So the rapture has happened. And... According to this moment in the movie, just the phone lines are going crazy off the hook at this magazine. So people are like, my family's gone. I need to call a news magazine. Right. See if they can give me any detail. I need someone who I know will be fair and balanced about this. <laughs> Both sides. Is it possible that my family is not gone? So <laughs> I'd like to hear the argument for why my family is still here. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so he abandons his juice. I don't know why he doesn't just carry it with him. It seems like it would take longer to set it down than to just run into the other room. But he abandons his juice. He runs into the newsroom. And sure enough, all of the main characters except the two Christian ones, Keith and Darren, are, you know, on the phone trying to figure out where all the people who disappeared have just gone and why all these airplanes keep crashing to the <laughs> earth. <laughs> and immediately... Brad the atheist is like, all right, well, this is definitely the rapture. I am Christian now. Facts and logic. I'm pwned. I'm a Christian. So he decides to call any church. Yep. So he's like looking up church, comma, Jesus in the phone book <laughs> he says to, to Vince, find he's... somebody to check on the science of this. Right. Yeah, he checks in with Vince and he's like, Vincent, which church do I call? Which one's the right one? Yeah, but Vince doesn't know how to church either. Damn it. He goes Episcopal, Baptist. I don't know which is right. And of course, the movie's like, it's fucking Baptist. Okay. It's not a fucking Episcopal. <laughs> That's <Yeah. our> goddamn <laughs> 
<laughs> idiots. <laughs> but then they're like, oh, wait a minute. What about the only two real TM Christians in the whole office? Somebody better check on them. So Brad runs and checks on Keith and he's missing. He's not in his office. Vince runs to check on Darren. I want to point that out. I want to underscore that very quickly that Vince by himself with no one else in the room runs in to check if Darren has disappeared. And we watch that. Yes, he is surprised by what he's found as well. But then it turns out it was all a prank. <laughs> it was <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That is a rapture prank. We need to talk about how this worked out. So Darren and Brad called the entire office of both sides magazine together. It was like, hey, everybody, stop doing your work. You know how Brad's been a real dick about my religion and the thing that I actually believe? I want you to all pretend it's true. So that when he's worried about death and destruction and a missing child, which is part of the lie that they tell him, yep. we can jump out and be like, ah, gotcha. And as a part of that, he had to be like, Lauren, you, you're not getting raptured because you're a fucking whore. So you're going <laughs> to stay <laughs> right. here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And keep in mind that they had like a juice run to set this all up, right? That's how long they had. There's been months, months of rehearsal, and it's a whole thing. <laughs> and then they finish this, and Brad is like, hey, that's incredibly cruel and insane. That's a terrible way to treat a coworker, especially when it's based on their religion. And Darren's like, or is it a sneak peek at the future? And Brad's like, it's not. And he's like, or is it? It's like, it's not. But <laughs> he says... This illustrates a truth that's yet to come. That's what Darren, the religion guy, says. Yes. That's describing a thing that's not true. That's yep. that's what that means. <laughs> yep. That's something that's not. Exactly. Given a large enough universe, you're always describing or always illustrating a truth yet to come. <laughs> and Darren points out, and, and the movie seems to think this is a good point. He's like, now, think about this, Brad. If you're so confident in your atheist bullshit, you shouldn't have been scared at all when it looked like the rapture happened. Right. So Brad's supposed to think, huh, when I had evidence, I did believe it. But now that that evidence turned out to be nonsense, I should still believe it. I really wanted Brad to pull out a handgun and be like, well, since you're going to go to heaven, you should want me to shoot you in the face right now. Right, Darren? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this ends on Darren being like, the Bible, Jesus, demon aliens. No way that could be true. And I hear him say that. I was like, or could it? And he literally yep, says, he says the or word. Could it? <laughs> That's the end of the fucking movie. He, he might as well do a two for flinching on Brad at this point. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, or could it? Bing, wink, Christiana Brothers. End of movie. Yeah, he might as well have done a jump freeze. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, but the ending of the movie is actually goddamn amazing. I don't know if you guys appreciated just how awesome the ending of it was because there were like eight minutes of credits on this little movie and then there were just like three and a half minutes of a black screen so that they could get almost <laughs> to a 90 minute runtime. It's so good. They cheated for like 14 <laughs> minutes at the end there. It was awesome. Oh, I thought you I thought you were going to say there was like a Marvel scene in there and I missed it. No. Oh, no, man. Uh, Brad goes back into his office and Samuel L. Jackson is sitting there. <laughs> Jason Statham's just beating the shit out of an alien or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I know this seems like a weird question about a movie that was this ham-fisted about the points it was making, but I genuinely don't know. What was the moral of this story? Pay attention to your <sighs> wife's religion. Oh, right, right. Don't let her go off being the wrong religion. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Unidentified, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to identify the movie that we're doing next. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, after the tremendous success of our first Christian surfing movie review, turns out there's actually a bit of a genre there with uh, more than one entry. Oh, okay. So we'll be watching Soul Surfer. Awesome. I think that was the one we meant to watch the first time. Okay. So with that, Kevin I look forward Sorbo, to Dennis Quaid. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking 
former Farnsworth quoter. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 310 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clubs. Brad escalated the prank war to kidnapping, and I 100% support him. <laughs> Lauren accidentally tasted coffee one day and turned into an insatiable fuck machine. Vincent pranked Darren back by pretending to be God over the company loudspeaker and telling him to kill his son. More meth for you. I bet they're going to love that. Oink, (laughs) oink. No, no, no. You don't ask fellow adults to say oink, oink. I'm just so happy I got moinked and then be like, what's the matter? No, 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 no. I'm glad the ring doorbell guy. Our ad was too silly. Really? Our part of the ad was too silly? Why don't you call your good personal friend, Jamie Siminoff, creator of the ring doorbell? Maybe you've heard of it. (laughs) The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.